what's this Dutch man doing here in India? And I've been in India now for close to 10 years. So uh, in those 10 years, I've really seen a massive amount of change. And when I came to India 10 years ago, Infosys and Wipro were the cool companies, and there was hardly any startup ecosystem to speak of. And now, of course, the cool companies are the uh, Flipkarts and uh, yeah, the Immobis or the Vizuris of this world. And uh, it's really heartening to see that an entrepreneurial summit like this draws this big a crowd. And you know, sometimes my wife and I jokingly say that I'm actually an economic refugee. Because you know, in, I, I was an investment banker for 10 years almost in Europe, and right now, the last 10 years, there's really not been that much activity there. And definitely, I was lucky enough to be in India for the last 10 years. But the beauty is, if you look at tech m a in India, and how the ecosystem is developing, then the next 10 years are going to be even more exciting. And I won't go through this in too much detail, but really the story of tech m a in India is uh, the key shift which is happening is that, as I said, when I came here 10 years ago, the story in India and tech was IT services. Now, if you look at the last four or five odd years, and especially the last 18 months, all the money has gone into what we call IP-based tech, so it's either internet or it's software companies. And uh, you know, if you actually look at just the last nine months, almost 90% of the investment dollars of investors have been going into, v into either internet and software. But then if you look at you know, what's happening on the M&A side, on the M&A side, IT services still rules. And more than three quarters of activity and value is still generated by, on the M&A side, uh, IT services companies. And this is, of course, just a situation where there's a whole pipe of an inventory of Indian uh, internet and software companies building up, and most of those haven't reached the stage or the maturity level as yet where you can see M&A. So, you know, whilst uh, as an economic refugee here, I had a good first 10 years. Uh, I'm very excited about the next 10 years because I know that there's such a big inventory building up. So, uh, you know, something else which is an interesting observation. I think on the left-hand side, all you know, tech companies which have raised a lot of capital. Uh, and on the right-hand side, we see a list of tech companies which have actually seen an exit over the last three, four years. And this is taking out the IT services part uh, only focusing on internet and software. And I'll bet you that everybody in the room knows the names on the left-hand side, but the names on the right-hand side, many of those you know, are not so familiar to everybody here. Uh, and that really tells us that you know, when it comes to internet and software, a lot of the investments have only happened in recent years, and a lot of these companies are still in the process of maturing. Um, but what it also tells us is that you know, historically the Indian ecosystem hasn't been able to produce very big outcomes. And a lot of these outcomes, I personally led the sale of Tutor Vista to Pearson for 200 million. It's one of the largest M&A outcomes in the last four years for India. Um, so uh, clearly, the venture capitalist and the private equity community here in India now do believe that the Indian ecosystem can create a billion dollar exits. Because at the pricing at which they're starting to invest in the companies on the left here, you know, if they don't get billion dollar outcomes from quite a few of those, they you know, will uh, in due course be out of a job. So uh, clearly, you know, b besides us being enthusiastic about the opportunity uh, as an investment bank, the investors are really starting to put their money where their mouth is. Uh, but the big question is, of course, will India deliver? Then I think this is also a question which we often get asked. Uh, uh, Yes, there is a lot of activity happening, but are the global majors starting to wake up to India? And slowly we are seeing some IP acquisitions happening, but all of these you know, which are here, you know, they're sub-30 million dollar deals. So these were mostly small acqui-hires, tuck-ins. Uh, but yeah, the good sign is some of the global majors, technology majors, have started to uh, dip their toes in the water, but uh, yeah, it's, it's still early days. Now, um, you know, this is really the heart of the story. Uh, right now, a lot of dollars are going in, and this is the last three years. Three billion was invested in internet and software, uh, and if you take the count after this year, it's going to be even more than five billion, uh, because this year is such an exceptional year. Uh, and if you then compare it with an ecosystem like the US, of course, it's still a tiny ecosystem. 
but maybe the better comparison is to look at uh, Israel. And if you look at Israel, yeah, then you can see that from an investment standpoint, lesser dollars are going in, only half. But then if you look at what the ecosystem has been throwing off as M&A exits, that's almost seven times of what India has produced in terms of exits. So, uh, you know, there's really two ways to look at this. One is, obviously, there's a large inventory building up, so a lot of that is still to come when it comes to India. But there is also a bit of an element of an, uh, you know, uh, an exit problem uh, with the market. And clearly, you know, if uh, the, the M&A activity levels don't go up more close to 10x of where they are today, then in due course, the ecosystem will clearly have an issue. So, you know, what are the key reasons why, you know, when you look at the ecosystem, a lot is already happening on the investment side, but when it comes to the M&A side, eh, it, it's still relatively uh, nascent and, and way behind a much smaller ecosystem like Israel. I think uh, we, we like to make two distinctions. One is more probably on the software side, eh, where most of the Indian tech companies are competing globally, um, and where you build a global IP, um, there, as a global software company, you need to get on the radar screen and get discovered by the global majors, yeah, by the Oracles, the Microsofts, etc. You know, that's slowly starting to happen, but still, a lot of the Indian companies have a bit of a discovery problem there. Then, I think the other one that we've seen uh, is that, uh, you know, global acquirers, they use global accounting standards, uh, and there, you know, some of the companies still have to uh, fall in line as well. Um, and then lastly, and I think that's the main kind of reason why you don't see too much in the internet as yet, but that is going to change. Uh, for instance, if, if you, um, yeah, building out the ecosystem, uh, when it comes to consumer internet, a lot of it, what's going to be attractive to say, a Flipkart or, say, a Snapdeal uh, is, is stuff that you will find in your backyard. Eh? But for them to really eh, start to pay top dollar, they themselves need to have grown to a certain stage. And that's now happening. Eh? Some of these companies are super well funded. They, eh, you know, eh, have visions and plans to scale like Alibaba has scaled. And that's going to drive, in our view, a lot of M&A when it comes to the consumer internet side of things. So, uh, yes, there is hurdles, but we strongly believe that most of these hurdles will start to reduce over the next couple of years, eh, and that activity levels will uh, grow, yeah, many-fold from here. But um, I think, um, yeah, um, as an entrepreneur, um, you always have a couple of choices to make. And, of course, at an entrepreneurial summit, everybody always talks about venture capital, um, but first and foremost, before deciding, you know, which route do you take and how are you going to build the business, you need to really, uh, I feel, take a step back and say, is this a business which suits itself for a venture capital model? And am I the type of personality that uh, is suitable to that model? Because uh, uh, there is this kind of uh, situation where VCs would want to put you on steroids and you either quickly grow and create a big success or you fail and you pivot from there. Um, and, you know, there's many businesses which are just great businesses as a lifestyle business, eh? uh, and services businesses are often an example of that, but which are uh, not completely suited to the model. You know, if you are in a business which is suited to the VC model, then, you know, my current advice would be eh? use the current market environment. Uh, it's as frothy as it is. Uh, I've seen a couple of boom-bust cycles. I went into technology M&A uh, in early 2000 during the first dot-com boom. I would say that the amount of frenzy that's there right now in India is almost comparable to what I saw. There's better fundamentals. I'm not saying that they're, you know, uh, we'll see what happened in 2001. But clearly, the, the market is frothy. And um, yeah, th this is as good a time as any to take in capital. But still, keep in mind that whenever you're taking capital, it's like the first innings of a test match. Eh? Uh, uh, the, the monkey to deliver an outcome is on the entrepreneur's back, and ultimately, eh, uh, that's when the, the match really finishes. So, 
uh, and that's the last one. You know, what most investors have also seen and what most entrepreneurs are experiencing, often it's easier to get the next round of capital, but getting that exit down the line, uh, which uh, is the ultimate outcome, uh, getting your uh, company listed in either India or the US, uh, or um, uh, uh, doing a blockbuster m and can be a lot harder. So uh, really, if you're not as hot as something like a WhatsApp, which you know, uh, is something which is so unique that, uh, that uh, that's a company which gets bought, it's not a company that gets sold. But if you're slightly less hot, then you need to start planning for it. So net-net, I think you know, uh, the next 10 years are going to be even more exciting for the Indian ecosystem. Uh, to uh, uh, go to the next level, uh, we would definitely expect that uh, M&A levels will start to pick up. And if they don't, then I think a lot of the VC crowd here in the, uh, in the audience and uh, the likes of ourselves as well will be out of a job. <laughs>